So on the evening or the day of this demonstration, Harry Houdini came up with a brilliant idea. They were going to sit in a circle and all of them would hold hands. One of Marjorie Crandon's demonstrations was that she had a black box with a hinged lid. Inside this black box was a battery operated bell. When the lid was closed, it would be held suspended by some compression springs. And the idea was that at the given time, spirit would close the lid and make the bell ring. This box was placed in a certain distance of the medium, close enough for the energy to allow spirit to operate this bell. And Harry Houdini knew this, you see, so he decided that to ensure that this medium was not going to fool everyone and close it with a foot, he decided that he was going to, it's all right ladies, I'm not going to raise my pant all the way up, <laughs> but he decided that he was going to tie the top of his leg, you see, below the knee, with a bandage and make it swell up. And this would give him the excuse for allowing him to sit there with the pant leg raised. He needed the pant leg raised in close proximity of the box Marjorie was on his right and they held hands, so he done the right leg and he kept his leg close to the box to see. Because it was in darkness, you understand, because of the phenomena, that this lady was not going to close it with her foot. But, I want to explain something to you, you see, Women's brains are cheaper than men's brains. <laughs> no. Women's brains are cheaper than men's brains because they're used. Men's are not. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to understand that, you see. And Marjorie Crandon's brain was well used. And so when it started, you see, she asked the person to her right to let go of her hand so that Harry could hold it and she gave Harry her other hand. And then, in very Canadian ladylike fashion, she swung her first leg over, and then the second leg. And then she replied, Harry, now you not only have both my hands, but both my legs. <laughs> and with that, the bell rang. With the other phenomena that was demonstrated, Someone cunningly <coughs> wrote a letter to the press informing them of the phenomena demonstrated and that Harry Houdini was overwhelmed by the evidence. Harry Houdini had a reputation for decrying mediumship because he needed that to attain the public interest in his work. When Harry Houdini read the newspapers making him look silly, he was furious. So he insisted that no prize that was going to be offered, and the prize was $2,500 in 1924. So he insisted on another demonstration. And Marjorie agreed, except that when she turned up for the demonstration, Harry had built, or had built, a metal cabinet in which for her to sit in. So she went and sat in it, and the only phenomena given was the direct voice from spirit of Walter Stinson accusing Harry Houdini, Harry, you're a cheat. That was all the phenomenon. 
nothing else was given. And after sitting for an hour, it was decided that there would be no evidence. So, Marjorie was allowed out of the cabinet, and then Harry Houdini insisted that the cabinet be searched. And lo and behold, they found a rule. Enough for Harry to use as material that the medium was fraudulent. This brought up a very bitter response from Marjorie, and this was never forgiven for the rest of her life. In 1926, after Harry Udini died of a ruptured appendix, his assistant, Jim Collins, was questioned about this ruler. You spilled coffee at lunchtime today. <laughs> Did you spill coffee at lunchtime today? You have a white mug. I had that. <laughs> well, your mother said you spilled it. She was with you when you rolled up the newspaper. Okay. You've got to be careful here, haven't you? <laughs> it doesn't pay to turn up late. We will. I'm in jail. <laughs> yes, exactly. On the fold up table. <laughs> anyway, Jim Collins was cornered on this question of the ruler because it never left the pages of the press. <coughs> and when he was trapped, how this ruler was there because the cabinet was searched before Marjorie sat in it, he wryly responded by telling everyone, well, I threw it in there because my boss told me to, who was Harry Houdini, because he wanted to finish her off. It never really had much effect upon Marjorie Crandon because she had such a large following and she demonstrated regularly before the Society of Psychical Research. So she was well supported. But it ne she never forgave it, and she declined in a lot of her work, partly because of her bitterness, but also because of the failing health of her husband, Dr. Crane. She nursed him through a state of terminal illness, and then when he passed over, she nursed herself through her own serious illness. Till November the 1st, 1941, at the age of 53, she passed in the spirit. Shortly after 1926, Malcolm Bird wrote a book, and you can still get it, I think, on eBay. He wrote very kindly of the work of Marjorie Crandon, and the book is entitled Marjorie the Media. I can't afford the book because it's very expensive, but all you cottagers, I'm sure you've got all the money you can afford. <laughs> this is the story of a wonderful, world-famous Canadian lady, Canadian media. And it's proud for me to talk of this lady before you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. Thank you.